Hi, this is Eternal King here, bringing you another LOR video. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about understanding matchups today. So, uh, what is key to understanding a matchup? And, you know, by extension, understanding why a certain deck might be overperforming in a meta is play patterns. So, we can look at one of the top meta decks right now, which is Deathless Inquisitor. And we can talk about what makes this deck so powerful. Um, in terms of its, you know, primary play pattern. So the way that this deck functions is that it plays Fading Icon, the Wings in the Wave as a 0-1. Um, it plays two zero ones. Um, it plays Fading Icon, a 3-1 and a 0-1. And it plays Ceaseless Century, a 2-1. Um, so basically it just plays a whole bunch of Chumpers as 3 ofs. Um, all Chumpers. And the, whole, the point of these cards is to be hate spiked or to be death grasped. So what's going to happen is, is your opponent's going to set up blocks um, that are advantageous for them and then hate spike at fast speed or death grasp. These cards in terms of the removal scale in standard are the strongest in the game. There are no stronger removal cards in standard than hate spike and death grasp right now. Uh, they are exceptionally powerful. Even something like Soul's Harvest is very powerful as well. The one of a crumble, but mainly it's going to be the Death Spike, the Death Grasp, and Hate Spike spam is what you're going to see off of the uh, you know, the fast speed interactions during combat. So understanding that, um, you know, I can talk a little bit about why you know I can win five games in a row with Scouts um, at 100% win rate on competitive ladder, and you know why I'm coming out ahead on these exchanges. And part of it has to do with inevitability. So uh, a good example is that if I play Grumble Slug, Grumble Slug is a 2-3. And if the opponent plays Wings in the Waves on 1, and let's say I have a Fleet Feather Tracker on 1, so 1 into Grumble Slug, um, and the opponent's got, you know, two zero ones, I challenge one of the zero ones. I attack with the Grumble Slug, the opponent has to waste a Hate Spike on a Grumble Slug. But the Grumble Slug only costs me 1 mana, right? So they're basically spending two mana to remove a one mana card. Um, it doesn't quite work out that way because spell mana is considered half a mana, but like for, for the sake of argument, let's say it's a one mana card. So they I've played a one mana card, and I played a second one mana card. The opponent has to block and then hate spike. Um, that is very advantageous for me. Uh, the opponent doesn't realize it, but that is exceptionally advantageous for me. That's literally game winning for me off of that play that they're making. The fact that they're wasting that hate spike on an attuned creature is so much worse than if they spent this on something else. And you know, even if they spend it on something like a Broadwing, it's like we're not playing in for the Broadwing synergy. Losing the Broadwing does not matter. Um, what does matter? Well, losing an MF, you know, a lot of the time you're not going to want to play Misfortune on Curve. Um, because of that hate spike and death's grasp coming down and understanding that matchup. Um, you know, it's entirely possible that you want to save her for later, or it's entirely possible that you don't even want to, you know, keep her in your hand and just tutor her out later with a scrutinizing sergeant, which is a far more powerful play, because you're getting 6-6 six, six stats plus her play, her, her attack effect. Um, that's far more powerful than just having her removed on curve for free. Um, keeping form up, you know, uh, active at all times, thanks to your tune creatures, is very high value. Uh, so you can do something like, um, we talked about the, uh, basically it's a calling strike, right, in Shadow Isles, and I forget the name of the spell all the time, but uh, being able to deny that spell at uh, burst speed is very powerful. Um, and also just the interaction with the challengers, being able to take those advantageous trades all the time. Um, being able to deal with things like, uh, you know, the slow roll uh, Inquisitor plays, like, you know, the Deathless Inquisitor plays, the slow roll stuff. Deal so basically the deck deals well into Chumpers. It deals well into draining your opponent's resources because they have to kill the Broadwing with a Hate Spike. They have to kill the Grumble Slug with a Hate Spike. Um, you know, the Fleet Feather Tracker and the Shell Shockers, there's no pings. They, they, they are going to want to, like, trade into them at a tempo reduction. Um, that's all going to feel bad for the opponent. Mirai Warden, again, there's no you know, um, uh, there's no Vile Feast, right, to deal with Mirai Warden. Mirai Warden is very problematic for them. There's no Vile Feast, you know, they're not going to want to hate spike that or Death's Grasp from Mirai Warden. That's going to feel really bad for them. And then all of these things, you just, they know that you're running Inspiring Light as a 3 of. 
So they have to kill things in your deck. All of these attuned creatures, all these little things, these little challengers, you know, the little two ones, all this irritating, uh, you know, basically chump creatures. You like they're playing chump creatures. You're just playing junk creatures. You know, you're playing these junk creatures that don't matter. Um, and there's this certain inevitability to the way that this deck plays that eventually something is going to stick, right? Whether it's the, you know, uh, it might not be till turn four. Like, even if they remove absolutely everything that you play, um, it's not going to feel great. But even if they remove absolutely everything you play up until, you know, the Island Navigator, that's fine. Eventually something's going to stick. You know, maybe you play the double Quinn. There's a lot of, you know, power there. The Scrutinizing Sergeant. So, like, everything summons two bodies, right? The Mariah Warden, the Island Navigator, the Quinn, the Scrutinizing Sergeant. Eventually, you're going to hit go six wide. Even despite all your opponent's hate spikes and their soul's grasps and all the removal attempts, eventually you will be six wide. And then you can play your Inspiring Lights or you can play your uh, four Demacias. And you can drag things and ping things with Misfortune. Um, uh, you'll even flip these champions some of the time um, if you slow roll them. Again, that's pretty key. Uh, landing the you know Genevieve Genevieve's big value off the scout attack so again understanding your matchups is exceptionally important but uh, right now this this scouts deck with the double attacks and the the champs and things like that like it feels great and understanding your matchup there is very very important um, examining a more aggressive matchup things are even more advantageous for you right uh, you look at something like this with the Annie Fleet Feather Tracker just gets to kill Annie for free right that game's already over um grumble slug is going to block exceptionally well into a lot of these things um at, at a one mana cost right uh they can sunhawk you they can stage hand you but again you're gonna you've got mariah warden to go super wide so even if they stun you you're going to be wide enough to deal with all of this stuff um so this is going to feel exceptionally powerful into the annie matchup um something like uh zed quinn could be more problematic um, you can challenge the uh, Elusives, which is good. The one of Badger Bear is going to help here a bit for the tech. Um, Hate Spike, we already talked about how Hate Spike's not that big of a deal in a Scouts deck because you're just there's so much inevitability, so much going wide. Um, you have uh, the burst interact, you know, reaction to the Hate Spike. You know, the worst thing they can do to you really is just go like super shark heavy and just you know, hope they're not on. Like they can't always be on, you know, a super shark heavy hand. So. Uh, this deck, I find, feels far less powerful without sharks. Um, I wish there was almost a way to tutor these out because uh, these sharks are so important for this deck to function. But yeah, that, you know, most of the time you're going to be okay into that as well. Um, and we'll look a little bit into kind of Noxus aggro as well. Um, you know, Scouts is going to do really well into this. Right, Grumble Slug just blocks Blade Squire and Legion Saboteur and Solari Soldier, so like all of that's free. This is free. The two one challenger is free. Right, the only decent play they have is Rune Weaver, Solari Sunhawk not doing much, Lisa and Dolly not doing much, and and that's you know this I think that's why this deck is starting to taper off a little bit because like playing the the kind of the one drop spam into the two drop spam. And then just kind of not having any way to capitalize off of it feels really bad. Like, Might's not enough to capitalize. Shield Vault isn't enough to capitalize. Like, it's, it's you know, Scouts just does it so much better. You know, Scouts is going to be double attacking with cheaper units at, a, you know, a reduced mana cost. Um, and challenging problematic cards. And double swinging per turn. And there's nothing in this deck that can hard remove it. Like, they can stun, you know, one thing if they want to uh they can try to double silence which isn't going to be great because like what are you silencing um i guess you could pre-silence misfortune or quinn to remove you know i don't know like that doesn't that's not going to feel great for you so very strong very very strong into that deck um overall uh okay yeah oh my god this is gonna this matchup is impossible to win if, if you're playing scouts into this like they, they just they don't have anything to remove um you know they could potentially like blow back a misfortune i guess um that's like their best play because uh, that's the only way they've reached that three removal mark where they get really lucky with the mystic shop high toss of, as the one of um but yeah like they, they, they want to be putting most of this burn into face that's how this deck functions and uh you're going to just be trading so efficiently with this the mariah warden you know into the 
Yordle Squire or the Beard, um, the the Grumble Slug, right, into the Boom Bam, uh, Baboon, and just like all that stuff, you're just trading up. Then you play the big three drop into uh, the, the Sump Dredger, but then you actually get to uh, a free card off of that, and they don't. And uh, then you go wide again on the four drop, and it's just like you'll they'll never be able to out tempo the scout's deck the way that I built it. Um, so th that's you know understanding your matchups and the way that the meta has shaped um, ramp again double attacks into this ramp shell that just does not have sufficient enough control tools to deal with you. Um, you know they have one burden nice that they can get lucky and try to draw. Um, this version of the list doesn't even run Avalanche, for God's sakes. Like, no, no, no. You have nothing to be afraid of into this ramp deck, which is terrible. Like, who built this deck, honestly? I'm going to keep <laughs> making fun of that, because please, we run three Avalanches in this at least, just to, like, maybe win games, but no. Uh, yeah, so again, Scouts is just good into everything, and, and, and it's, it's only by examining the lists and taking a look at what you're likely to run into that you know um you can understand why it is that you're winning games um off of your own deck construction because again you know winning five games in a row even if it is just like plat ladder because like, again i don't grind out much i don't play that much i think it's more fun to talk about the game because i've already you know hit masters i've already done everything i need to prove um i've beaten all the haters and, and naysayers um I school trolls constantly, so like at this point, there's really nothing that anyone can do to kind of take away the wind out of my sails. So I mostly enjoy playing, you know, I'll play five games in a row, I'll win five games in a row, and then I go back to kind of deck construction and talking about decks, because that's, you know, again, at the end of the day, um, I'm not going to sit here and play 20 games and win 20 games in a row, because what's the point? 